Hi friends, it's Miss Leanne, and obviously I'm not in our regular library, I'm in my home library. In my room I have a little reading nook with two cozy chairs, so I'm not in our regular comfy chair, but I still am in my comfy chair, and I'm ready to tell you guys some stories. We finished off with our Georgia Book Award books, and we had about five that we had not finished when we left school. So, we are going to read Georgia Book Award books, and there's a special form for you guys that you can fill out on your Google Classroom page and still vote. So, we will still be able to pick our winner from Valwood, and um, when I can get back into the school, I will let you know who's in first place and who's winning, and we will just kind of um, finish a little bit differently. So, the first book we're going to read is called When a Wolf is Hungry. And usually when I read you one of the stories, I talk about the desk jacket. This book actually did not come with a desk jacket. So we can't pull the desk jacket off and see if there's a surprise underneath. But this is called When a Wolf is Hungry, and it's written by Christine Naman Villeman and illustrated by Chris D. Giacomo. And this is a little preview. One Sunday morning, Eggman Big Snout, Lone Wolf, left his home in the woods with a great big knife in his paw. Now if we look right here, hmm, I wonder why he has that knife in his paw. So let's read the story and find out when a wolf is hungry. One morning, Edmund Big Snout, lone wolf, left his home in the woods with a great big knife in his paw. Now Edmund had a hankering for some rabbit. Not just any ordinary cottontail though. What he craved was a grain-fed, silky-haired rabbit, one with just a hint of sweetness, a city bunny. He hopped on his bike and headed for the city, determined to find one. He stopped in front of a tall apartment building. He checked the names next to the buzzers and found exactly what he was looking for. Max Omatos, miniature rabbit, fifth floor. Oh, Edmund was so happy. And with the point of his knife, he pressed the button for the elevator. Ding! Inside the elevator, he set down the knife and adjusted his bow tie. Now, just because a wolf is hungry doesn't mean he can't be fashionable, but of course, he forgot his knife in the elevator. Ding! The turkey from the third floor was on her way home from the bakery. Oh, a knife! That's just what I need to cut this cake. On the fifth floor, the wolf realized his mistake. He pressed the button again, but <gasps> no, no knife. It doesn't matter, thought Edmund. I'll pedal home lickety split and get my chainsaw because sliced rabbit is delicious too. In no time at all, Edmund was back. Ding! The bear from the fourth floor. Good day, sir. Are you our new neighbor? No, uh, I mean, um, yes, said the wolf, lying through his teeth. Welcome to the building. My, that's a nice chainsaw you have there. What do you need it for? To slice a wrap? <gasps> to trim my, would you mind terribly if I borrowed it until this evening? I have a hedge to trim on the roof. Not at all. How annoying! Edmund got out of the alligator on the ground floor. Rope. I need a rope, he thought, to tie up that rabbit and eat him in peace. The wolf pedaled back, but he was getting hungrier and hungrier. All of this biking certainly worked up an appetite. Ding! There in the elevator was a skunk and his hands were quite full. Hello, are you the new neighbor? 
Yes, yes, grumbled Edmund. I'm delighted to meet you. Oh, look, you have some rope. Is there any chance I could have it? This great big package is such a nuisance. Drat. I suppose so, sighed the wolf. The skunk was so pleased that he let out a little air. Edmund decided to take the stairs back down. The elevator had gotten a bit too <gasps> smelly. Oh, well, never mind. The wolf rushed home to get his big pot. He would just throw the rabbit in and eat him whole. No more messing around. The wolf was all out of breath by the time he got back. A large cow was waiting by the elevator. Oh, hello, Mr. Um, Edwin Big Snout, a new neighbor. How delightful. And what a lovely pot. It is, isn't it? Tell me, neighbor, would it be too forward of me to ask to borrow it? Well, I sort of need it. What a shame. My husband will be terribly upset. But no matter, you can explain it to him yourself, won't you? Never mind, just take it. Trat, 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 rats. All right, it's barbecue time, thought Edmund. I'm gonna grill that rabbit just as he is, ears and tail and all. So Edmund went home, tied a trailer to his bike, and he pedaled as fast as he could back to the city. So he's gonna take his barbecue grill. He means business now. Ding! Right there in front of him was Miss Eye Stopper, who had a box of matches in her paw. Ooh, how fancy. Do you live here with your parents? Um, no, all by myself, stammered Edmund. How interesting said the young wolf. Oh, is that a grill? That's just what I was looking for. Thank you, Mr. Wolf, you are too kind. I do hope I'll be seeing you around. Arg! enough is enough. I'm going to eat him raw with a little mustard and that's all. Edmund made it up to the fifth floor without meeting anyone a note was taped to the rabbit's door. I'm on the roof, Max. To the roof I go, my little rabbit, to eat you at last. Our new neighbor, please join us. Come over here, dear friend. You even brought mustard. How neighborly of you. Don't be shy. We won't eat you. Edmund Big Snout, vegetarian wolf, has moved to the city. Mr. Edmund Big Snout, vegetarian wolf, president of the Good Neighbor Association. Famished, finished, the end. Now don't forget to vote on your Google Docs how you like the book. There's gonna be a place to say if you wanna give it one star, two stars, three stars, four stars, or five stars. Remember five stars is if you really, really, really love it. And one star is, yeah, I don't even care if I hear that book again. So remember to vote from your heart and Stay tuned for next week's book.